Hello, welcome to the Bible study in First Baptist Church of Los Angeles. Uh, today is March the 20, actually March the 30th, 2021. So we are here in uh, the Psalms. This is Psalm 30 we're looking at today, and it really tells us something about the hope David had for the resurrection, and he himself and the people had been through a severe drought and had learned to trust in God's provision. And really, in a way, the deliverance of God uh, is a kind of way that God re resurrects or renews us. But there's something very unique, of course, and singular about the resurrection of Jesus that is the hope of what is yet to come, the hope of all who have lived this life and can look forward to their place with God in his kingdom in heaven. And really there is a hope among many of the Jews in the Old Testament of life after this life, that God exists in heaven and that God prepares a place for us in heaven, that God dwells in his kingdom, in his temple in heaven uh, and has created this earth. And the interplay of God as the creator redeeming this earth and redeeming humanity is a key theme in scripture. So in Psalm 30, we have a celebration of God's deliverance uh, by David. And even though we know that earthly security is an uncertain, we trust that God is always faithful and is one who pr provides salvation. So let's take a moment to pray as we prepare to get into Psalm 30 on this uh, 30th of March, 2021. Thank you, God, for your presence, your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you open your word to us. And thank you for David in writing these words of inspiration and hope and faith as he put his trust in you and experienced the way that you brought new life and renewal and hope and a vision of the resurrection to him. Thank you. Amen. Okay, so here in Psalm 30, we'll, I'll just read the whole thing and then we'll look at it more carefully in sections. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his, praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. O Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction, in my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. So here on this Holy Week, we begin to think about the meaning of God giving hope and salvation to the people of Israel and to the people of the world. And particularly, not only did God foretell his salvation through the prophets and through David, but God fulfilled his promises in the coming of Jesus, the very Son of God, the Savior. Now we see David talking about how much he was concerned about his life and how he had come close to dying and into the depths of was it despair or was it actually a health concern or was it the people as a whole experiencing a time of drought? We are told that in this time 
there, that he wrote this, that there may have been a great plague. We, in this time of a pandemic, understand how a plague can be very difficult. We've been living in the valley of the shadow of death with this COVID-19 pandemic. We recognize that there are times that God allows for these things to happen so that we are brought to an awareness of how much we need God and how much life is fragile. We must take care of one another. Indeed, you could say that there are times that the Lord allows these humbling plagues or diseases to remind us of what's important and to remind us to take care of life itself and one another and, re and our relationships are important. So many times we take things for granted. So many times we don't really think about the freedoms as well as the blessings we have. But when things change to where those freedoms or those blessings are either removed or diminished, we go through a time of wondering. And David cried out for God's mercy. We should cry out for God's mercy. Even now, as we think this pandemic is over, well, it's not. There's these variants, and we're dealing with a disease that has a shifting kind of ability. Uh, we must remain vigilant. People must get vaccinations as a way to prepare for the healing that can come. But if people do not receive these vaccinations, it's kind of like not praying. It's kind of like not working together. It's, it's really a kind of way of not trusting in God's provision and favor. God has so granted us the ability to find medications that work. And so God has given us these tools. And really, in a way, when we use these tools responsibly and do so in a way that shows respect for God's creation and one another, then it is that God can lift us out of these difficult times, but we still must take the measures. I have my mask here and I wear it out and about. I'm gonna do that until things clear up. I've received my vaccination, sure, I could just dismiss the situation of the variants and other things going on. So, you know, I'm all set. Well, it's also part of a witness. It's part of an understanding. And so, let's hear a little more specifically a few things in this Psalm, Psalm 30. David begins with exaltation. I will exalt you, O Lord. We run into trouble when we exalt people to the place that we begin to exalt them as if they're the Lord, and that's wrong. David exalts the Lord first and foremost, and we're called to do the same. And why does he do this in this particular expression? Because God has lifted him out of the depths. He has been uh, in some difficulty, and of course, yes, the people as a whole were, were in difficulties, and there had been a plague, and it could be that David himself had had gone through uh, some sickness or disease here. Or maybe he was being held by captors. Maybe people who uh, were watching him or gloating over him. We see this in that first verse. He goes on in verse two. Oh Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. So that does give us a clearer indication that he personally had been affected by either a plague or a disease or a serious injury or condition. And God had brought healing to him. And even to the point in verse three that he talks about being brought up from the grave, he had been so close to dying that he began to think that, you know, he was gonna die. He was concerned. Now this is in a way a foretelling of the son of David, Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, the Messiah. Indeed, for Jesus, he indeed did die, but he didn't die from a disease or from his own sin. He, did, he died because he was willing to bear our sorrows. 
he was willing to take our sin upon him. He willingly allowed the sin of mankind to be put upon him, the disease of mankind, the deepest disease of sin, he received to himself so that he could atone for our sins, forgive us our sins, bear the penalty for our sins, die for our sins, so that three days later, through his victory, he would be raised. You spared me from going down into the pit, David said. Well, the Lord God, our Heavenly Father, allowed his son Jesus to go down into the pit because he alone could handle it. He alone could defeat it. He alone could bear the penalty. Going to verse 4. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. So from the depths of our despair or disease or depression, we can experience the Lord lifting us up. And our expression of gratitude and praise is something that is part of not only an expression that's natural, but it's, it's, it, it's healing. It's part of that healing process. It's part of the strengthening of one in their being. Singing to the Lord brings strength to the soul and ministers even further and to those around who may be going through difficulties themselves. Verse 5, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Indeed, the Lord allows us certain times of suffering and difficulty or the consequence of our choices or behavior for a moment, for a time, so that we can learn, so that we can also empathize with others. Many reasons. Sometimes we go through something because, uh, let's say, we, we have pain because there's something more that needs to be addressed. Indeed, with COVID, it seems as if part of what's been exposed is we have many social and spiritual ills that need to be addressed. We can't just keep going on our merry way and not realize that we're headed toward destruction. God would indeed want to slow us down or stop us so that we could get right. Indeed, this indeed may be something that God has allowed for us for, only, for this moment, for this time, so that, his, that we may seek him and know him and a favor of his grace may be received by faith. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. God will help bring us through. If we've lost a loved one, if we've gone through painful times, God can bring healing and renew our joy through his saving grace. Verse 6, when I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. This is a dangerous thing to say. Sometimes we feel too secure in ourselves. We must put our security in God. Verse 7, O Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. There are times that we don't see the face of God because of some mountain uh, or barrier that's in the way. But the mountain that David's talking about here is, is the saving, constant presence of God, that God is there like our rock for salvation. God favors us with his presence, and in that we can stand firm. But there are some times that there are clouds around the mountains. There's some times that we don't see the mountain. I know I've been around some mountains, uh, both the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains and the Sierra Nevada, where you'll get clouds. And when you get those clouds, well, you don't see the mountain, but you know it's there. And it's that way with God. If we don't see God, it doesn't mean that God's not there. God is there. God stands firm even if there's mist and clouds. In that case, we are not to be dismayed, even though we might feel that if we don't see God. But still, there are reasons God allows these moments when we must be stretched beyond what we can see. Verse 8, to you, O Lord, I called, to the Lord I cried for mercy. 
The Lord is good and he understands and he wants us to call out to him. And, he, and here's what David said. And he, is David being reasonable? He's not always reasonable when he prays. Matter of fact, it's as if he's telling God, hey, God, here I am. And of course God knows he's there, but, and God will answer him. But he, you know, he's, he's letting his own feelings and maybe his own depression, his own uh, weak faith get in the way. He says, what gain is there in my destruction? In the midst of his sickness, in the midst of our sickness, sometimes we say, God, where are you? Why am I going through this? I don't understand. When I was going through cancer treatments at first, I thought, God, this is hard. But I put my trust that God was there. But sometimes if a loved one near us is perhaps going to die or is going to die, we wonder, Lord, why? What gain is there in destruction? In my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? David comes to his senses in verse 10. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my help. The key, of course, is trusting in God's presence, that God is. God said, I am that I am. This is the way that God has revealed himself, that he is with us. Jesus said, I will be with you always. So David says, Lord, be my help. He has to trust in God's being always with him. I am with you always. I am that I am. Yahweh. Verse 11, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The joy of the resurrection is what believers in God and in Jesus are to celebrate and trust. Belief that in this life, God is with us, yes, but beyond and through the passages of this life, God is with us. And there is uh, the presence and power of God. We can trust God is in heaven. But we pray for his king kingdom to be manifest on this earth. His, his kingdom come. His will be done. And so God reclothes us. We may be wearing sackcloth, but he will reclothe us in joy. The joy of salvation, the joy of hope, the joy of heaven, the joy of God's spirit, the joy of Jesus Christ through the power of the resurrection. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. David has gone from the depths of despair and now is filled with joy, even though he might still be battling even though he may still be overcoming illness, or, or at least remembers what it was like, he gives thanks to God, for he has his hope firmly upon God, his strength, the mountain, the rock of redemption, God the creator, God the redeemer, God bringing salvation. Well, this is Psalm 30 for this Holy Week. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and give you strength and peace. Amen.